Bitcoin, is it gonna hit $100,000? Crypto insiders seem to think so. Find out more in this video. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome to the World Series of Trading, the only place where you can make real money trading virtual funds. My name is Ron and I'm a pro trader on the platform. I've been trading for over seven years and I'm here to bring you expert market analysis. But before we get into it, I need to remind you that none of these videos constitute as financial advice or advice of any kind to take any position in any financial instrument. But without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, play traders, and welcome to this market analysis for the 25th of March, 2022. Now, today we're covering Bitcoin specifically for all you crypto weekenders and those of you joining the Crypto All The Time tournament starting this Monday. So, main topic today is, will Bitcoin hit $100,000 by mid-2022? Mid-2022 is about three months away, so will it happen? Well, co-founder and managing partner of Nexo, which is a crypto lending platform, seems to think Bitcoin will hit 22,000, sorry, 100,000 by mid-year. And he said that in a bit, in a Bloomberg interview that he had midweek. However, this isn't the first time he said it. He also said it um, within a CNBC article that I came across um, at the beginning of the year, right? And we're going to go over that um, in more detail just now because within this article, he actually states the two reasons that he believes Bitcoin will hit $100,000 by year end. So let me share my screen and we will dig into that article. Right. And I hope now you can see my screen. Okay. So I'm not going to read the entire article, but the main part of, well, the headline of the article is founder of crypto lending platform argues that Bitcoin could hit $100,000 by mid-2022. Okay. So the article reads, on his part, Trenchev said there are two simple reasons why he sees big gains ahead for Bitcoin. One is that institutions are building out their treasuries and filling it with cryptocurrency, he said without providing any, any examples. Firms such as MicroStrategy and Square are among, um, are among known examples of companies that have bought massive amounts of Bitcoin. So that's the first reason. Um, companies building out their treasury reserves with Bitcoin, right? So these are large um, corporates like, uh, say for example, Apple, Microsoft, and um, other large companies that, you know, are holding a lot of cash, but now are choosing to hold some of that cash as Bitcoin, cash that they're not looking to deploy immediately, right? So those are their treasury reserves and they're looking to, um, whilst, they probably still hold the majority, say 90% of it in US dollar denominated assets or in US dollars or in some kind of um, US treasury bills or something like that, right? They may be looking to add maybe 10% of that cash that they're holding in crypto, right? So that's what he's talking about here. And what he says is there are more institutions coming in and looking to take advantage of that, looking to hold some of their idle cash in Bitcoin, right? Now, that's definitely a factor that could drive the price of Bitcoin way, way higher, right? Institu institutional adoption is something that can increase the price a lot more than retail buying because institutions have a hell of a lot more money than um, retail, retail investors like you and I, okay? So, that's the very first reason why. And is this a good reason? Um, it all depends on whether, first of all, you think this information is credible, right? Um, he's obviously a crypto insider, so he knows um, whether or not institutions are, uh, whether or not there are more institutions coming in and choosing to hold more of their assets in crypto, right? Because um, that's essentially what his business he gets um, exposure to as a function of his role in business in the crypto business right so 
if more companies really are um, coming in to hold more crypto, then that's definitely an upward movement in Bitcoin waiting to happen. However, um, even if you think this information that he's providing us with is credible, the other factor that we need to consider is how did he even get to $100,000, you know? How do we know that this institutional adoption is going to is not going to increase the price to say fifty thousand and then that's it? How do we know it's not going to increase to a hundred thousand? As in, where is he getting this hundred thousand dollar price target? That's that's uh, the real question here. So that's on his first point. Now his other point is another reason. Um, another reason is his prediction that cheap money um, is here to stay which will be a boon for cryptocurrencies. His comments come despite expectations the Federal Reserve could increase interest rates several times this year for the first time in the pandemic era as the U.S. central bank seeks to combat inflation. The Fed was among major central banks that took unprecedented monetary easing steps in 2020 to keep financial markets afloat during the early days of the pandemic. Admitting his contrarian view of lasting easy monetary policy, Trenchev said most people likely got it wrong in their federal res- in their Fed rate hike expectation. I quite frankly think as soon as we see a rate hike, it's going to be a dip in equities and the bond market. And quite frankly, the last few years, we haven't seen much political will to power through any sort of correction in traditional financial markets. Now, I will agree that his view is very contrarian. And the thing about contrarian views is they usually have a very low probability of actually panning out, right? And we've already started to see um, the Federal Reserve prove him wrong in in this aspect, right? Because the Federal Reserve has already increased interest rates by 25 basis points, right? And they expect to increase interest rates by a further, well, by a further 25 basis points times six. Okay. So given that um, this is what's most likely to happen, that completely um, invalidates his second point, which is that people have got it wrong about the Fed. And the other thing that you need to take into consideration about the Federal Reserve is the fact that they are under pressure to increase interest rates at quite a fast pace because we're seeing um, inflation that we haven't seen in the past 30 years. I mean, US inflation, I think the last read was 7.6%, right? And at 7.6% inflation, if your interest rates are still below 1%, then you're way behind the curve. And that's sort of the pressure that um, Fed President Jerome Powell has to deal with at the moment. Okay, so he did make it clear that in the last meeting that the Fed is ready to um, to react to whatever inflation is. And his other point was that there's very little political will to power through any sort of correction in traditional financial markets. By stating this, he's basically saying that. Um, the Federal Reserve has a priority on keeping financial markets stable. However, the Fed has a dual mandate and those, that dual mandate um, essentially um, is essentially their, um, their mandate to number one, price stability and number two, full employment. Those are what the two things the Federal Reserve is meant to do. They have no business fiddling in financial markets, right? Although the financial markets could be an external factor within their decision-making process, their priority is inflation and full employment, right? So with the whole inflation story, um, we've discussed that as in they're way behind the curve. They have to increase interest rates in order to keep um, inflation in check, right? That's their price stability mandate. And then full employment, um, they also need to, uh, they, they need to hike rates, well, essentially in this tight labor market, right? So that's the, that's the picture with the Federal Reserve. So I think Mr. Trenchev has a very good point when it comes to institutional adoption, assuming, of course, 
that he's got inside information that we haven't seen of institutions um, putting more of their treasury reserves towards cryptocurrency. However, his point on the Fed is completely invalid. So could Bitcoin hit $100,000? I think the institutional adoption is a huge factor which could really lead to, to that happening. But the Fed, I think he's completely off on that one. But anyway, let's move into the charts and see what's actually going on with Bitcoin. Okay, so now I am going to share my screen. Um, there we go. So that's the MT5 platform which we trade on within the World Series of Trading Competitions. Okay, so this is a chart of Bitcoin, four-hour chart of Bitcoin, and as you can see, um, the last couple of weeks I've been pointing out that we are trading in this sideways range in Bitcoin and you know there's very little on in terms of the fundamental catalyst to drive us way beyond this right so with Bitcoin we are now starting to see a clear upward trend the last time I pointed out that the moment we hit this level we've got a very high probability of moving to the downside and we did. However, I was expecting a lot more downside potentially to this level, but that didn't happen. And I had to completely shift my view the moment we saw this movement up, that movement down and the break through the previous high, right? So that's two consecutive higher highs, two consecutive low lows. In technical analysis, that is the point where you actually have an upward trend okay so this is where the upward trend really started in the short term and after this break um i was looking for the market to give us false break and then move lower however we were able to sustain these high levels oh and there we go we're starting to get that strong push to the upside so right now we're in an upward trend and although over here we are at a major level of resistance um, I think the most probable outcome is we get a blow off move to the upside and um, maybe we cool off a little bit. However, I still don't think this level over here presents the best risk reward ratio in order to be buying. So I don't think this is the best level to be buying. So for the crypto weekenders out there, um, this level over here is going to be very important. You might want to play for some upside, short term upside. Um, however, there is a lot more downside. It's a high probability upward play. However, it's not the best risk reward. But given that the crypto weekend or competition is just a weekend competition, I think what I'll be looking to play is for some upside in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, right? Um, and then maybe for those of you in the crypto all the time tournament, what we may be looking for is maybe after the weekend blow out, blow off move, um, we see some cool down, which presents a better risk reward to take this to look to the long side. Okay. Maybe we get a retest of this. So that's what I'm looking for in Bitcoin. And I will see you in the crypto weekender. Now, if you like this video, please smash the like button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content just like it. And if you'd like to join in on the fun, we have a trading competition running right now. By the way, the prize pool for 2022 is well over a million dollars. So you do not wanna miss out on the action. First link in the description if you wanna join in on one of the trading competitions. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one.